Okay, so today I'm going to start looking at the Bifrost system. I like the Bifrost for like liquids, mainly because it's got such a better, you, you control it better and it looks a lot better. And one reason I kind of like it a lot better is because basically you can cre create these uh, cache systems. So you can kind of scroll through it, whereas like the particle simulations, you kind of got to wait for it. Well, and what this is, is creating... Um, the actual memorize, or in a bottom line, creating this uh, simulation, kind of memorize it to the computer, to where you can kind of cache it to the computer, or uh, or it will actually cache to the RAM, or then you can actually cache it to the computer, so you can actually kind of revisit if you wanted to save that cache, actually. And caching is just another term of like, uh, each frame being memorized to a folder that you can kind of revisit, I guess. Kind of simplified term. But um, there's lots of stuff you can do with Bifrost. Um, I'll put up the uh, Bifrost information stuff that you can kind of read about it. Uh, you can go up here and you can create smoke and all kinds of stuff with it too. Um, I really think the liquid though is the way to go with it. Um, just right off the bat, it gives like a really nice one. Now I have the viscosity turned up in this one to kind of give it more of a um, really thicker. But you can actually turn it down and it'll look a little different. Uh, you create mid from objects same way you do with the particle systems so let's get started kind of creating one of these things and i'll just kind of walk through and it's pretty important because if you notice over here on the left it's created all these different elements kind of like how the uh, the m particles created um the different emitter like but these are all containers that you can kind of go in there and a few different things with these things you have to adjust to kind of get this right so or get it to where you want it So first things first, it's in the effects tab. If you don't see Bifrost fluids up here, then you need to go add it to the plugin. You go to the plugin manager and you'll go to your Bifrost and just add them all. Most of the time they're not going to come preloaded. So if you don't see your Bifrost stuff up here, then just go and load everything. I'm going to create a ground plane. And I am going to create a, an emitter object, my square here. Not lifted that high. Just remember, um, whenever you're creating your emitter, it goes off your subdivisions. So the less you have, the more you'll, the less you'll have to deal with. If you've got a really complex object and you want to emit bifrost fluids or fog from, then it's probably going to take a while. So you may want to start small with something. Maybe you got a pipe, just kind of knock the caps out and everything. So I am going to go up to Bifrost and just add liquid. I have my um, timeline down here. Playback speed, play every frame free. You could go play every frame max real time, but I just have it set to that right there. And I, what I did is I just right clicked playback speed. I have this thing set at 120. Um, probably for this, I only had 50, so we're just good for that right now. So you're probably good right there. So if you just basically just start off, you really just see this one thing come down here, and that's kind of confusing because, you know, what now? Well, let's kind of get us there. First thing we want to do is go to this Bifrod Liquid 1. And I'm going to lower the resolution of the base of the voxels here so you can kind of like um, properties container one. Right. Oops. Master voxel size 0.5. Now, the more you actually lower it, the longer it's going to render. I'm just going to go 0 0.05 for right now. So I can actually see the stuff on there. You're going to want to go to Bifrost Emitter Group, which is right here. And to the properties, Emitter Props, you want to go to Continuous Emission. Just click that one. And now you've got like a continuous emission where everything's going to kind of continually emit while your timeline runs. We may have to pause this 
to let this thing run sometimes because um, just simple fact I wouldn't want you sitting here but this is kind of pre-warning you if you're working on one of those uh, MacBooks or something like that you're probably going to want to venture elsewhere because this is pretty render intensive and it takes up a lot of your memory of your computer while it is simulating um, so just keep in mind if you're using one of the bigger machines it's probably not going to be that big of a problem but it works just like you're rendering with your graphic card it's going to try to fill up that memory of it's calculating every single voxel in here so if you notice the more it emits the slower it's starting to go because two I'm running and I've stopped it now it's going to go infinite obviously unless you add a collider in there so what you can do right off the bat is add a kill plane to it which in other words it will stop it at this ground plane right here so select your liquid kill plane now you can see that it's basically not going to go any further than the actual kill plane or you could have added a collider there but I know that it's not going to calculate anymore there it doesn't work like a collider it just stops them from going any further right there in your simulation see no past the bottom so let's kind of add more to this shape right here we're going to go to your liquid shape up here liquid shape one do this point size up a little bit kind of make it a little bigger kind of make it thicker because we're going to go for a thicker one um, you can choose let's look at the Arnold render just where this is coming in let me add a light in here Just to see right off the bat what have we got actually let me go ahead and add a collider in here before I do that so collider I'm just gonna make like a little trough here I kind of have like I had before earlier and if you've been messing with the fluids or the in cloth you should be pretty pretty understanding of what this is basically you're just going to create a collider with the object Oop, I don't want it live extrude Oop, I need to extrude the face oh I want to self select let me push this down make it larger a little trough here and I'm going to select my cube I'm going to select my bifrost liquid and I am going to add collider so now I'm going to let this simulation run and it will react with it it should give a nice little splash in here There we go. As you can see, it's starting to react. Kind of push up in there. Sometimes you'll get this overflow right here. So yeah, I kind of pause that, or you can match escape if you want to stop the timeline. And I'm gonna open up my Arnold render just to show you what we've got already. Yeah, so already you've got like this nice fluid liquid coming out of here. So if you're just going for a clear base water. You know already off the bat this is what you've got which may work you can always hide this emitter here if you press the cube not that cube but my cube up here I believe control H is hide yep there we go so now I have this magical flow coming from nowhere it doesn't look too bad I mean just straight out of the bat the water you can actually add a shader to this a surface shader to that liquid there if this is what you're going for I'd make it green or something like that I'll do that in a minute here though 
So I want to kind of make it a sticker. I'm going to go to my Bifrost properties. Liquid properties. Under viscosity. Bifrost liquid properties container one under viscosity. And it's set at zero now. Um, the more the bigger you crank it up, the more it's going to get thicker. And obviously with your render time too. So if you notice now it's rendering really slow, a little bit slower than it was. I'll go ahead and pause this. Okay, I'll let that one run out to render frame render. Um yeah, and let's go ahead and now let me wait here. See what this looks like. Yeah, that's a lot thicker there. It didn't splash up, give it enough splash enough. So by raising the viscosity of it, you actually get more, more of a thicker, thicker base now. Now, if you want to kind of save this as a mesh, you can enable mesh and basically shade that any color. Kind of an example, move that around. Liquid shape one. Go to Bifrost Meshing right here and enable. So if you recache it, you will basically get a mesh. See the way already away, it's running a little bit faster because I've let it run fast. It's actually thicker now and it's actually rendering out a simulation of an actual mesh. Let's pop that one. And it has made a Bifrost liquid mesh here, which is a pretty high dense mesh that it's created. The cool thing is, is you can just kind of hide the liquid if you want to. Um, Control H. Um, let's add a shader to this. Tendered surface shader. Do a preset of blood. Let's check out what that looks like. Oh yeah, it's pretty nice, thick. Now the specular, let me kind of turn it, take these down if I don't want that much reflection on these. That's all in my shader. So yeah, you get like a really nice, thick. You know, you can like go back and adjust the viscosity of it if you want to. However, you want to uh, make it fit with your fluid. Whatever look you're going for. The good thing about the mesh is you can go and delete the history. And you can kind of move around if you wanted to. You have a pretty high intense, depending on your voxel size and everything, pretty high intense that you can try to go out and like quadra, uh, add quads to, uh, but you can go and you can start manipulating vertexes and stuff like that if you want to kind of reshape the actual shape of what it was. Might look kind of cool or might look for what you're going for. Sculpt it even more, in other words. I noticed some of you with your projects have to have like just not the actual simulation running, but just like, you know, dripping kind of in the action shot. Well, this may be work for you or this may work for you best. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back and unhide my. Um, my simulation here. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to add a shader to this so it won't be just clear. Turn it green. Let's run this out for a minute. Just to preview it, see where we're at now. 
color looks like. Oh yeah, that's cool. It's kind of a thick. I still had my um, viscosity turned up pretty high, which is cool. Um, now, how do you get it to where you can kind of like play it back? What it's doing whenever it's remembering this thing, it's actually caching to the actual RAM, to the memory of it. You can actually run this to the disk, in other words, by this compute and cache to disk. So you can send it to where you want to go. So if you have a certain cache that you want to, you like to, you want to send it to your default, um, you can always do that. Sometimes it runs a little better if you run it to the disk. You know, if you've got one that you're working with and you want to save different frames of it, because with each one you can actually um, save different frames at, at certain times. But just you know, running that simulation would make it pretty boring or pretty long, taking a long time with your computer. So the best thing to do is to run a, uh, a cache, like cache to the disk. That's what I do. So it's going to be in the format, uh, the project folder, wherever you have it defaulted. If you have it set one already, then it's going to run to your project folder where it was downloaded at. You can cache the elements of the mesh or the simulation. And you should start to end of what frames you want to cache. So it's going to have you simulation. I want to go 1 through 50. And I want to create. Oops, maybe I should set the. Select my liquid before I did that. There we go. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the existing cache over, over what's created. Because every time you don't save this to the file, basically it's creating a new one, but you want to replace the existing one. So sure, go ahead. So it's going to run out, and it's running now, as you can see down through here, and I'll pause this. Okay, so now the cache stopped running. It actually started stopped running at 50, and it just kind of started speeding on down the timeline. While it was caching, basically sometimes whenever you do that, you know, it may not show in the viewport here, but it's actually it's actually running. It's just doing it kind of on its own. So now you can kind of like scroll back and forth with this to see how this scene is. If you wanted to um, snag any frame, you could create a mesh basically right there, delete it how you wanted to. But yeah, that's how it's done. Um, I like using the cache system because once I create a simulation, I can kind of keep keep messing with it and going back. But as you can see, you know this. Like I said, I had the viscosity turned way back up, but you can um, push uh, pull it way back down and then come up with like a more of a splattery type water of sorts. Uh, move this emitter wherever you needed to. I have my emitter hidden right now in the scene, but um, but yeah, that's. It's kind of an intro to Bifrost. Um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in the dynamics to play with, but the biggest thing is keeping it in straight with these um, these different elements up here and kind of follow along with what I did to kind of get you there to making the continuous emission and adding a kill plane and then making a collider and adjusting the viscosity and the voxel size. And there's a lot of uh, people have messed with this for a couple of years now. Or Yeah, it's been pretty dominant now for the past couple of years so I'm sure there's like um, besides what I'll send you in the Autodesk stuff people creating stuff and been creating smoke and fog and stuff like that so okay we'll have fun with this and um, yeah we'll see you next time